Guess what? It's time for me to officially turn British. <laughs> Why is that? I've lived in the UK long enough where I now need to become a citizen. And I have to take this huge test. So if you've ever wondered about what that process is like, check out our video. But before we show you that, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the bell to be alerted about our latest content. So I've been here living on a visa in the UK for five years. And that means that now I need to look into getting citizenship if I want to stay. Okay, here I am. I'm in bed with my computer and I'm about to start learning from the e-learning module for my upcoming Life in the UK test, which is a lot of stress because everything I've been doing all these years really hinges on me now having advanced to the point where I can now take this test to achieve British citizenship. I can't even say that, it's like a tongue twister. To achieve British citizenship. So, I'm just nervous about it. I don't know what it's gonna be like. And uh, it's just a lot to think about. Not to mention this headboard behind me. Wow, that is crazy looking. I never even realized what's going on here in my bed. <laughs> I'm gonna study, start my learning journey here. I feel like I'm back in high school or college. It's a study night, people. I'm gonna pop some popcorn and maybe even crack out a little bit of wine because a relaxed mind is a strong mind. <laughs> Hello, Janet. Hello there, Hotwood. How are you? Good. Now, you are an expert in all things British. I think you're maybe. the smartest person we know. <laughs> so, I have the citizenship test coming up and I have these questions and I want to know if you know these answers All right. as a British resident. Let's citizen. hope I don't let the side down then <laughs> otherwise I might be deported. Actually if you don't know them I'd feel better because then it makes me feel like it's not just common knowledge. Okay. Okay practice test question number one. What important change to our voting rights took place in 1969? A, women over 35 were given the vote. B, prisoners were given the vote. C, the voting age was reduced from 18 for men and women, or reduced to 18 for men and women. Or D, compulsory voting was introduced. Uh, I'm gonna say the voting age was reduced to 18 for men and women. I think it was the uh, vote for teenagers. So C. C. Ding, 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 ding. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> You're one step closer to being a Brit. Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody once told me on multiple choice, if you don't know, always go with C. Don't know if it's true, but it worked for this one. Which of the following statements is correct? A, self-employed people need to pay national insurance contribution themselves. Or B, employed self-employed people can ask a friend to pay their national insurance contributions on their behalf. Well, it would be nice to ask a friend, but what if your friend doesn't pay? So I'm gonna guess that self-employed people need to pay their insurance themselves. Let's see, A is correct. A. Yes! <laughs> Which of the following statements is correct? A, the divine right of kings meant that the English king should rule France, or B, the divine right of kings meant that the king was appointed by God. Ooh. Well, divine right of kings would mean divine is appointed by God, B. And that is correct. We're doing okay here. I only have to get 24 of these right, although this is just a practice test, so we can't get our hopes up too high. You know, in high school, when you study and study and you do the practice test, then you get into the real test and it's way harder. I have a feeling that's gonna happen. I can't have this false sense of confidence. It's not easy though, is it? No, no it isn't. Um, that's, that's quite a task to know all that part of history. And this is just a this is just an example mock test. These aren't even the real questions. So really? So you don't know what more. the real questions are? You don't know what they'll are. be. You have a big, thick guide that you have to study. 
Okay, what is a national biscuit of the UK? <laughs> I have not a clue. I'll say, I'll say something silly like a digestive biscuit, but I'm sure it isn't. Is it a rich tea? Is it a hobnob? Or is it a chocolate digestive? Oh, then it has to be a chocolate digestive, my guess. Because <laughs> that's your favorite? No, I don't eat them anymore, but they used to be a favorite of mine. I made that question up. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was a good one. <laughs> all right, thank you for your help. That's all right. <laughs> so I had this nightmare last night. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was thinking that I couldn't pass my test. I couldn't remember anything that I had studied and I couldn't go back to sleep. And I was like, I, I was up for, I don't know how late. It's just a lot of stress and I'm just really, really hoping for the best. There's so much going on at the hall. There's been so many activities and so many things going on and emails and meetings and things just trying to keep the hall going that I feel preoccupied. I don't feel like I can focus 100% on the test, which I really need to be doing. But at the same time, I can't turn my back on the hall and everything else that we have going on there and everything else that we've built there. I just hope I don't screw it up. Wow, so here I am. It is a windy day here in Manchester and I'm on my way to my UK citizenship test. It's about to happen in one of these buildings here. I can't believe this day has come. So wish me luck. Okay, here I am at Bolton House. I think this is the right place is where they said to go. So in I go to take the test. I think I may have to leave you and the camera behind. Okay, I think this is the right way. Okay, I took the test. I have no idea if I passed it. I'm not feeling that confident. There are a lot of questions on there. I mean, I really studied, I really did, but I swear there were questions on there that was not in the material. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed, but uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It's not good, because I, I, I put so much time and energy into this living here and what we're doing here and now it's finally come down to this test and having been here five years so i thought i was gonna ace it i mean i thought i was gonna walk in there and nail it i studied enough because it was that important it was not a high school biology exam this was like everything riding on it i have to pass this thing I have to have to have to have to have to i'm supposed to go home and check this email what happens if I open the email and it just says, get out? Okay, I'm back at my computer. I'm just sitting down to log in. Got an email saying log in to my account that I use to sign up for the test to get my result. Provisional booking results. One. Okay, I'm gonna click on it right now. <laughs> yes! yes! Oh my gosh. It says pass. It says pass. It says pass. <laughs> oh, that was easy. <laughs> and just when I thought that that was the end of the video, I had absolutely no idea what was in store for me when I arrived at the hall this morning. Hello, so today it's Hopwood Takeover and we have a little surprise in store for Hopwood. So as he arrives at the hall today, we will be celebrating the fact that he has just passed his British citizenship test. Joining us guys. So, as he walks into the hall today, he should hopefully be guided by the red tape that we have already set up for him. This is a Hopwood barrier. It's a preventative barrier. And if he doesn't, if he steps over it, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully he should be forced to go just down this path here and as he enters the hall again, following the red tape, which then takes him into the main bit of the hall, where he should then walk in to witness the surprise himself. Hello Joe! Hello, <laughs> there we are. Looks lovely. So as I walked up to the hall this morning, there was red and white striped tape everywhere. 
and I got a little bit nervous and instead of walking in the door where I normally walk in, I was directed to come over to this other door and I thought something was off but I also thought maybe something bad had happened at the hall, the way people said, you need to go in there. I thought that I was gonna walk in and perhaps find a collapsed ceiling or a big leak or something had gone horribly wrong. And when I walked in the doorway, I saw some red and white striped hats. So I was even more confused. And then... doing all this without all of you. So you're the ones who keep me going. I really appreciate it. Surprise! Everybody shouted and started singing and clapping and uh, it was a kind of a blur now. I, I was, my heart was racing already coming in because I thought I was gonna find something that was not good. And then I was so thrilled to come in and not only find that nothing bad had happened, but actually that something celebratory was happening and it turned a Tuesday morning that was just a regular morning into a celebration. And to see all these familiar faces and all these friends and all these hardworking people from our volunteer group, it just was really exciting and just really made me feel special and it really added to the occasion. It was great. I was really moved by the whole experience. So if you liked that video, please like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell to be alerted about our latest content. And if you want to see more of our videos, please join us on Patreon. I appreciate your support and a special thanks to our volunteers for all that they're doing and all they've done and for making me feel so amazing today. <laughs>